The daily ritual of antagonism on the India-Pakistan border is played out against a backdrop of increasing tension between the two countries. The current crisis over the disputed Kashmir territory has been heightened by the knowledge that both countries have the ultimate weapon. There has been political and cultural conflict between the two neighbors since the creation of Pakistan in 1947. It seems that only the game of cricket has regularly managed to bridge the divide. Every day, right across the Asian subcontinent, in every available open space, thousands of imaginary test matches take place. In the dreams of the participants, it's always India against Pakistan. At the start of this year, one such test series did take place, for real. This is the story of Pakistan's first cricket tour of India for 12 years. It's a story of guns and paranoia, of heroes and their adoring public, of men and their private pressures. This is no sabre rattling. This is the fiercest. As the Pakistan team gather in Lahore, they are well aware of cricket's political context in Asia. The captain, Wazim Akram, has a former foreign secretary with him as tour manager. They can't afford diplomatic blunders on this trip. The decision to send the team had been taken in spite of the fact that there is tension and as a gesture of goodwill. Uh, we want to see cricket being played between the two countries. As they leave home, the Pakistani team know there are many Indians determined not to make them feel welcome. Their lives have even been threatened by some fanatics. By the time they arrive in Delhi, the death threats have receded a little. The tour's most vehement opponents have realized that in the popularity stakes, Hindu nationalism comes a poor second to cricket. Knowing that any incident could lead to war, India has guaranteed the Pakistan player's safety. To avoid being besieged by admirers as well as by protesters, the Pakistan team leave the airport from a side exit. The tourists will need their wits about them at all times, not just on the cricket field. Got globalized before we even arrived here, so definitely I knew that it's it's, it's just not cricket tour. It's more than cricket tour. Uh, the relationships between the two countries weren't at the best uh, uh, before, but everybody wanted us here, and they wanted that we should come and play cricket regardless whoever wins. Like that of most Indian boys of his age, Anand Ralore's life revolves around cricket. He breathes, eats and sleeps it, and when he's not playing, he's watching it or reading about it. He's worried that political activists will stop the tour going ahead. In addition to the death threats, they've already dug up the pitch in Delhi. <laughs> in earnest 300 miles south of Delhi with a warm-up match in the provincial town of Gwalior. Provincial town one day, garrison town the next. The boys are very relaxed and uh, for, I mean the families are obviously concerned but now they are, we called them back and we said the security is very tight and now they are relaxed as well. The Indian authorities have indeed left nothing to chance. 
The match against India's second 11 is attended mainly by armed troops, school children and invited guests. In Indian terms, this is practically a match behind closed doors. Which means at least the Pakistan captain can turn his attention to what he specialises in. It's a good start, comfortable start. Now the boys want to work hard. They're going down to train and do some fielding. That's a good sign. I don't have to tell them they're going themselves. So that's nice. The daily carnival of Indian life goes on, but the Pakistan team's only glimpse of it comes from the bus between stadium and hotel. <laughs> Tourists' social commitments have been paired to the bone. Don't embarrass me with this plate. How can I take hands with you? We are meeting right now. Just eat and hungry. Normally, the players are usually free to go to restaurants and enjoy themselves after a hard day's play. Uh, but this time round, because of the security tightness, uh, I feel that uh, it's important that, that they don't feel restricted or hemmed in. Tasha, are you Muslim? So I think this is one way in which we hope to divert them a little and let them relax. The name of Madras may have been consigned to the history books, but the people of Chennai still have a deep-rooted passion for cricket, and the rivalry between India and Pakistan is cricket's best-selling roadshow. They haven't played a test match against each other for a decade, and Pakistan have only toured India twice since the 70s. For some, this may be the first and last chance to see the great rivals in the flesh. 17-year-old Vidyut has represented both his state and the region. Dad was once shortlisted for the test team, but with a name like Venkataram Siva Ramakrishnan, there are one or two commentators not too upset he didn't make it. They'll both be there, father and son, for the big day. I'm going to learn a lot because the first time I'm going to watch India-Pakistan play, I, I don't remember the last time they played a, a test match, so it's going to be really exciting and like I wanted to see like how when Akram bowls to Sachin and how the spinners bowl like Saklin and Mushtaq and really looking forward to it and I was just waiting for this, waiting for this match for a long time. In Mysore, Anand and his friends have bided their time too. Anand will make the tortuous eight-hour train journey to Chennai, but there's no guarantee he'll be able to go to the game. He can stay with his cousin Sri and maybe his next-door neighbour, Indian fast bowler Javagal Srinath, might be able to wangle him a ticket. I only decided to go. He said, I'll do something, only by minute. The world's press are not being allowed into the stadium to watch the team's practice. It's petty autocracy stalling the media engine. If we aren't allowed entry at all, I'm sure it'll be a big issue. But as, as far as I see, what, what could happen is that, you know, knowing how things function here, maybe we'll be able to, you know, we'll be asked to study over a couple hours and then somebody will come and say that, look, I'm doing you a, you know, a big favor and why don't you come in now? The opposing countries might have their cultural differences, but it's a myth that the teams don't get on. There are long-standing friendships between the Indian and Pakistani players. 
Wazim is the first to congratulate Sachin Tendulkar on being awarded a Padmashri, Indian's version of the OBE. Thank you very much. Well in New Zealand, well done. Got it. Bus chala. The missus is there. No, she's not. Delhi Ari. Ah, my wife might be coming today. She might be coming today. Yeah, we are like friends. Chalo, mula kya thi? Okay. January 28, the interminable wait is over. As the gates open, the full extent of official paranoia becomes clear. Everything from Indian flags to black clothing, the traditional color of protest, is confiscated. Protesters are still afoot with one man trying to set fire to himself, and security is top of match referee Cammy Smith's agenda. If the atmosphere turns sour, he will have to decide whether the game can go on. Player safety is always a, a matter of concern to all of us match referees, and, um, but it looks to me as if we have adequate security here, uh, numbers of police around, and I think they seem to have things under control, and let's hope that it is under control when the, the game starts. Security at the VIP gate is less obsessive, and the referee makes it in without losing his black blazer. Gentlemen, are you ready? Yeah. Gentlemen, okay. Well, Wasim Akram, Mohammad Azruddin, the two captains, Tails. Cameron Smith, the match referee. This is a huge moment, people. Tails. Points gone up. Tails. On an ideal batting pitch, Wasim calls correctly. Pakistan will bat first in front of 50,000 clamoring fans and a billion people watching on TV. <laughs> The tension is tangible. This is the renewal of cricketing hostilities between India and Pakistan after more than a decade of ceasefire. For Wazim's Pakistan, the real test has only just begun. The forensic security checks outside the Chennai Stadium cause major disruption.
Vidyut and his father Venkat have, along with thousands of others, missed the first ball. But once inside, their spirits are lifted. There is early edginess in the Pakistani batting, and they falter in the face of barbed Indian bowling. Despite the benign conditions, Pakistan have lost half their side for 91. Yusuf Yohana leads a fight back with some belligerent shots. Fueled by their feverish support, India dismissed Pakistan for a paltry first innings score, 238, about half the total they might have expected. India's early success has nourished their supporters, but for Vidyut, one ingredient is missing. Being good, actually, like, uh, it would be nice to have also Pakistani supporters on the ground to support their team, but. Uh, and it could have been really good, like, to sit next to a Pakistani supporter and hear what, what they have uh, to say about Pakistan and their cricket and how they watch the match. Probably from under their seats during the final session. With Ramesh and Lakshman at the crease and 50,000 Indian supporters playing every shot with them, Wazim and Wakar, once the most feared fast bowling partnership in the world, are made to look ordinary. Close the play, India are 48 without loss in reply to Pakistan's 238. Not a good day at the office for Wazim. India have made the perfect start, on the field and in the stands. <laughs> the, the crowd obviously realised that the policemen meant business and they themselves performed really well. I mean, they applauded good cricket and um, it was a wonderful day. I, no semblance of a disturbance of any kind whatsoever. It was great. Some British rituals still linger in the subcontinent. And the next morning, the Siva Ramakrishnan family digest the newspapers over breakfast. The scribes are forecasting a handsome Indian victory. 
this year. But their predictions prove premature. Two days later, Anand Rolore is reading a very different story. Fortunes have fluctuated, and mercurial bowling by the off spinner Saklane and a century from Afridi have hauled Pakistan back into the match. Anand's eight hour train journey has been rewarded with a bed at his cousin's house in Chennai and the best seats in the house, courtesy of neighbor and fast bowler Javagal Srinath. It could be a memorable day, just as long as the engine of Cousin Shri's hatchback doesn't expire on the way to the stadium. Pakistan need eight wickets to turn what looked like potential defeat two days ago into unlikely victory. Cammy Smith appreciates the tension and leaves no one in any doubt what will happen if the players overstep the mark. Keep the people off. But if a selector comes on that pitch, I will send him off. Okay. Leave it. <laughs> Pakistan's coach, Javed Miandad, is bracing himself for a long, nerve wracking day. As a player, he relished this type of situation. As a coach, he can only sit and suffer. Everybody out, please. Come on, boys, all together. Boys, एक बात important याद रखनी है कि गिरना नहीं. Partnership उनकी लगनी है, गिरना नहीं. ये बेशक 50 रन रह जाएं, हम 50 पे हम के साथ out कर सकते हैं. out हुए. हमारे out हुए. बहुत बहुत important है. Okay, boys, come on. Arguably the finest batsman in the world, indisputably the most revered man in all India, five foot five inch Sachin Tendulkar has the power to influence a billion people. The Willow Prince stands between Pakistan and victory. But even Tendulkar is powerless to arrest the procession of his colleagues' wickets as the Indian team slipped to 73 for four. The cricketing gods are smiling benevolently on Pakistan. Ganguly is given out court when the ball clearly hits the ground. Eighty-three for five, and by lunch, Pakistan are firmly in control. Tendulkar is still there, but with half their wickets gone and still 185 runs adrift, India are feeling the pressure. Pakistan, on the other hand, are already thinking of victory. 
Always be humble in victory. Yeah. It brings you right up. Right up. Yeah. Right up. Give credit to me. But my only um, suggestion to the boys, to the team is not to get relaxed still. Plenty to go. I mean, I, I love the way they fought today. Two hours are brilliant. Do you think if uh, Tendulkar stays in, uh, you have a chance still? No, I'll do how, how do you see the game going this afternoon? What do you think, what do you think will happen? Anything. It's all in the game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, Tendulkar is a great batter. There's still a lot of pressure on him. And we're going to put pressure on him. We're not going to uh, give him away anything. For Tendulkar, this is to be an afternoon of unremitting tension. Pakistan's dismay, the gods appear to have swapped allegiance during lunch. Pakistan failed to take a wicket between lunch and tea. The pendulum swings again, and so does the mood in the tourists' changing room. Although they still need 124 runs to win, India have wrested the initiative. In this mood, Tendulkar is unstoppable. His 18th test century is inevitable. Shortly afterwards, Tendulkar's batting partner, Nayan Mongia, reaches a rumbustuous 50. With the match ebbing away from Pakistan, Wazim accepts the captain's responsibility. He must take wickets fast. He lures Mongia into a fateful heave. India now need 53 with four wickets left. Tendulkar seizes the moment.
His blistering attack leaves India needing just 17 to win. Wazim delves into his box of tricks one last time in an attempt to dislodge India's hero. The ball is handed to his wily spinner, Saklain Mushtaq. The captain's faith and his safe hands have given Pakistan hope. Tendulkar's 136 has been an immortal innings, but now his lesser colleagues are exposed. Just two runs are added before a double breakthrough. Suddenly, India are on the rack. The nation's hopes rest tenuously with Javagal Srinath, the man who got Anand his tickets. India need 13 runs, Pakistan one wicket. Pakistan win the first test by 12 runs. Cricket simply doesn't get any more intense. Instead of a barrage of rocks and old fruit, the traditional Indian response to defeat, the crowd defies expectations and gives their bitter rivals a rousing ovation. Politics, border disputes and national prejudice are eclipsed, at least temporarily, by sport. Instead of skulking off to lick their wounds, the Indian people take honour in defeat. The Pakistan team, the boys, they were wanted to win. They didn't... They, they knew that we needed one wicket, we needed Sachin to get out and we can get them, and we did. We believe in Allah, and I would like to uh, say, I would like to say thank to the people in Pakistan and all over the world who have been praying for us, especially in this game, because we, I knew and the whole team knew we got a lot of prayers behind us. February the 3rd, security is still intense, but the tour has so far been trouble-free. Encouraged, the Pakistani <laughs> players' families make the trip to Delhi for the second <laughs> test. Wazim has been joined by wife Huma and son Temur. One day, Chicken Licken was playing under an oak tree when suddenly a corn fell on his head. Boom! <laughs> There are more commandos in our dressing room than the players. <laughs> so we have to tell them to go off, we have to change. And they're just there standing, staring at us all the time. So it's just, it was getting too much, but I believe they're trying their best. They're being very nice to us, they're very hospitable. They're looking after us, whatever we need. Uh, they're daily looking after us. Nafima, were you, were you a bit worried? Very worried. Very worried because we didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, even if you have security, there's always that risk. And, um, but when they were, the day they were flying, I found out just when the flight was taking off that, you know, the threats have been withdrawn. So that was a relief. But, um, you know, as, as the days passed by, it seemed better. And yes, we did decide that let him go there and have a look what it's like. Because uh, with the baby, I didn't want to take a chance. And nor do the Delhi police. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
They dispatched a search party to the village of Sapiera Basti to assemble an elite group of specialists equipped to deal with a very unlikely terrorist weapon. Snakes. Eccentric activists know no bounds, and one has threatened to release poisonous cobras into the Delhi Stadium. Sixteen of Sapira Basti's finest charmers are now drafted in to swell the ranks of the Delhi police force. Not that the police ranks need swelling with the reported 10,000 men and women on duty. The fact that the deadly snake threat was withdrawn weeks ago is a little consequence to the Commissioner of Police. They had expressed their intention that they would be bringing a snakes and leaving it in the, into the stadium. Now, having expressed that intention, uh, we do not want to take any chance, you see. Uh, we have to be prepared for all kinds of contingencies. But even the best laid plans can go awry. Commissioner Singh's unique commandos have been forced to give up the one piece of equipment they need to do their job. Dark recesses in the stands aren't the only venom-free zones in the stadium. The pitch, hastily relayed after protesters had vandalized it, blunts the sting of the Pakistani fast bowlers. It's as flat as a Chandigarh chapati. Have you heard what the grandman said last night over the TV? He says it's gonna be it's gonna be a good pitch, lots of help for the seamers. It's a big joke, I must say that the people who digged up the wicket, they picked the right wicket because it is so dead. It's just not good test wicket, it's all negative wickets. India always complain they don't have fast bowlers. How can they have fast bowlers on a wicket like this? Overcome by a sense of duty, Satish Nath nobly looks for snakes he knows aren't there, perhaps trying to justify his complimentary ticket, free lunch, and 75 pence daily rate. At the end of the first day, Saklane's bowling has reduced India to 247 for eight. Great turnaround. I believe Saklane once again, I've been saying he's the best in the world and he proved it again today. Oh, relief now. A bit. Still plenty to go. You want number 19? No, I've got her chicken tikka. <laughs> Everything is there. Okay. Number 19. The snake charmers of Sapira Basti are redundant. They can now party at the cricket, free, with not a snake in sight. While most of the tourists' families have joined the players in Delhi, some remain in Pakistan. Yusuf Yohana's modest home makes a vivid contrast from the mock Tudor monstrosities favoured by young British sports stars. The Yohanas are from Pakistan's Christian minority, and Mrs. Yohana gains particularly deep satisfaction from her son's achievements. 
ਐਸੋ ਵੱਡੀ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਹੈ ਕੋਈ ਕਿਸਮਤ ਆ ਨਾ ਸੀ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਘਰ ਚ ਫਾਦਰ ਆਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਜਦੋਂ ਖੇਲਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਕਿ ਸਕੋਰ ਕਰੇ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਟੈਲੀਫੋਨ ਆ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਮੁਬਾਰਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਘਰ ਪਰ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਯੂ ਸਭ ਦੀ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ Though Pakistan are struggling in their first innings, Yusuf strides out with a youthful lack of inhibition to combat the trickery of India's Anil Kumble. He promises much. But in a flick of Kumble's fingers, Yusuf's innings is over. He's out for three. The disappointment he has brought on his faraway family is the least of Yusuf's worries. His immediate concern is an earwigging from Pakistan's batting guru, Javed Mianda. <laughs> ਕੀ ਬਾਰੇ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਹੈ ਘਰ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਹੋਗਾ ਲਾਜ਼ਮੀ ਬਾਤ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਵਾਮ ਕੋ ਜੋ ਤਮਾਸ਼ਾ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਫੈਨ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਕੋ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਹੋਗਾ The pitch is deteriorating rapidly and there's nothing the old sparring partners Wakar and Wazim can do to prevent Pakistan being bowled out for 172 80 behind The players have little private time with their families in Delhi. They are national ambassadors and sporting stars to be seen and badgered. Indians and Pakistanis love a formal get-together and both countries toss out invites like confetti. It's easier to escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> receptions and functions i remember once in a while it's okay but not before a test match I and mean, people i know cricket is very big in india pakistan people look up to you but you do get annoyed and you do get upset a bit at at, at some stage delhi's political heavyweights arrive at the stadium in convoy this is the place to be seen this week pakistan manager sharia khan is in his element talking shop with the likes of sonia gandhi But while the political maneuvering continues, the Pakistan team find themselves in a predicament. They have been set a target of 420 for victory. No team has ever scored so many in the last innings to win a test match. So, there's no doubt where they should look for help. Whenever you get problem, you always ask from the god. But you have to work hard as well. You can't leave everything on the god. You have to work hard and because god is there for everyone, not for one team. So, but everybody has their own faith. The Pakistani openers Anwar and Afridi have little faith in the pitch. Sticking to the theory that attack is the best form of defense, they cart the bowling to all parts, racing to 90 without loss by lunch. Only another 330 to go. In the dressing room the tourists enjoy a brief respite. Outside at the fast food stalls it's women and children first and every man for himself. Cricket is life's nourishment but no one wants to go home with an empty stomach. This session this half an hour 45 minutes very very crucial I believe in the test cricket after tea lunch break and tea break every half hour is very very crucial well, and if you don't lose a wicket the boys are eager that's a good sign they're thinking to be achieve this totally and that's a very positive sign from the team yeah. 
Over the next hour, thoughts of Pakistan breaking any world records are quickly banished. The gods are smiling on the Indians again. Or is it the umpires? Wazim enters to help Salim Malik repel the unwelcome intruder. But, as word spreads of Kumble's rampage, the whole of India is tuning in. It is one of those dramatic days to be forever etched upon the memory. Certainly, Anil Kumble will never forget it. Kumble's 10 wickets for 74 ensure India have won the test and drawn the two-match series. A diplomatic end to a daring venture. It might have only been cricket, but this tour always had a resonance beyond mere bats and balls. I think relationships between Pakistan and India will definitely improve because Indian crowd wanted us to come and play in this country and we enjoyed every bit of it. We got looked after very well and like we were like at home, we really enjoyed our cricket. So I think it was uh, good for the game itself. Plate, Saidi. Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Cheerful face. The tour has been a tremendous success public-wise. And uh, the effect of that will produce waves both in India and in Pakistan. I'm not for a moment suggesting that any benefits of this tour can actually unlock doors that have been shut for a long time. No, uh, those doors can only be unlocked by political people getting together. But one can at least improve the atmosphere, and that itself is a step in the right direction.